decided to take another look at that key event in Mike Tyson's life. So did you do this? Did you no, rape her? No, I ain't raped that slimy bitch. Outbursts like that make it hard to accept that Tyson's wounds aren't self-inflicted. Anybody else having fun like that? It was just young boys having fun, but it's me, I'm a big black rapist. Big, strong, black young kid wants some She says no, because he's an ape, so he hits her with his club, drags her by her hair, and rapes her and do as he wants. So that's the stigma I'm left with. All that I've been in life, I've been a lot of things, but I'm going to be left with the stigma of being a rapist. Whatever the public thinks of Mike Tyson, the fact remains, he was tried and convicted in an Indiana courtroom. He served his time in prison. Still, he continues to claim he had consensual sex with Desiree Washington. She has always maintained he raped her. The Pulse contacted Washington. She said no to our request for an interview. She also turned down our offer to respond to Tyson's comments. Why do you think she said you raped her? Because she's a sick, money-hungry... She's really a bad person. Now... I know you may not want to hear this when we're talking on the case. I'm up. You know what I mean? I got issues because of dealing with this for three and a half years. I got some issues. You know, I'm pretty violent. Violence has played a prominent role in Mike Tyson's life. He used it to mug people on the streets of Brooklyn. He was arrested 38 times before the age of 13. But he later channeled that violence to excel in the boxing ring. A terrific uppercut. By the age of 20, Tyson was the youngest heavyweight champion in boxing history. Bangs the fight. Wow, look at that up and got it, Tyson. Catches him with a right left hook, and he went down! A role model in the black community, says Reverend Charles Williams. For black America, uh, he was the biggest thing, you know, since Sugar Ray Leonard. I had fought him, and everybody was rooting for him. Everybody expected him to be the knockout artist, to be the most feared fighter in the history of boxing. But Tyson began taking swings outside the ring. Allegations of physical and sexual abuse surrounded his marriage to Robin Givens. His legs together, his busted, landing these... Oh, Nathan, I forgot! My busted down this! Look at this! He's not Mike Tyson down! In 1990, Tyson lost the title fight to Buster Douglas. Divorced, beaten, and bitter, Tyson was no longer on top of the world. And it was during this time that Reverend Williams invited the ex-champ to Indianapolis to attend the Miss Black America pageant. Well, we were excited because he is one of the, uh, one of the biggest celebrities uh, during that time that you could ever have. Within hours of setting foot in Indianapolis, Tyson was off to meet the contestants. Ever heard of the pageant before? I never knew it existed. I see all these beautiful black women, so I'm young, I'm 23, I'm... I'm a lightweight pig at the time, so I'm flirting with every woman that's there. Some of them vibe on me, some of them don't. Reverend Williams says that Desiree Washington zeroed in on Mike Tyson from the start. You could see where Desiree Washington had a, had had seek some special attention and caught Mike's eyes, and Mike was went on stage to do a rehearsal with with the girl, and uh, you could see their eyes constantly going back and forth. There were people that were more interesting and more attractive, but she was, um, I, you know, she was the easiest of the, the lot. How did you know that just having that conversation with her? Because in the conversation that I, I was leading to, I was, I was, my combination, my conversation was pretty, um, uh, I don't know, I would say overtly sexual. And in terms of overtly sexual, how overtly sexual? I want to fornicate with you, but not in those terms, you know what I mean? And uh, her response? Great. That's not how Desiree Washington saw it. According to her court testimony, Tyson called her a nice Christian girl and asked her to go out on a date. She gave the boxer her phone number. Did you know anything about her at that time? Did you ask her where she's from or what she was doing uh, in terms of her talent in the competition? Uh, I believe I was discussed. You know, I went through the, um, the formalities of asking where you're from. I believe it was Rhode Island, and she was, what else? She was um, a Sunday school teacher. I've heard that many a time. Court records show that the two met again that evening backstage at Johnny Gill's concert. The 
According to Reverend Williams, the 18-year-old Desiree locked eyes with Tyson. Why she was more excited about Mike than Johnny Gill, for example, I don't know. But, you know, I think that's normal for young ladies to to be in, in, in excited about meeting any celebrity. And Desiree just seemed like the type that she wanted to take advantage of the, whatever opportunity she could get. Much later that night, according to Tyson's telephone log, he phoned Washington from his limousine. It was 1.36 in the morning, and Desiree had just tucked herself into bed. Did you, did you say, even in that initial phone call, when you called her from the car, did you say that, you know, we want to go back to my hotel or anything yes, like that? Yes, yes, yes. Um, my, my objective was to try to hang out with her, and whatever's necessary, um, I guess, objective was to fornicate with her, then I leave, and that's what I planned on doing. All right, so when you're in the limousine with her, um, tell me what you were doing. You know, how far did it go? I think go? I'm kissing on her, and I'm fondling her in the car. And um, we're getting aroused, and then I'm ready to go upstairs. And I have the limo driver um, drop us off. But in the limousine, was she resisting you at all? No. Tyson's lawyers found three witnesses who said Washington kissed Tyson in the limo. But these witnesses came forward so late in the trial, the judge refused to allow their testimony. For her part, Washington said she resisted Tyson's advances. She told investigators that as they rolled up to the Canterbury Hotel where Tyson was staying, the ex-champ told her he had to go upstairs to check on the whereabouts of his bodyguard. Desiree followed him. What do you think at that point, when you got out of your limo, what do you think was in her mind uh, was going to happen when you got upstairs? Well, um, obviously I was hoping that she would say she wanted to have sex with me. Desiree Washington and Mike Tyson had sex inside that hotel room. That much is certain. But was it consensual sex, as Tyson claims? 911 police emergency. Yes, I'm, I'm calling to report a read. The cops didn't think so. You know me well, or is this somebody you just now met? Um, it's someone that's like seen us. Coming up, the prosecution goes on the attack. Maybe you wanted to go upstairs and make out with him. Does that make it okay when he rips your clothes off of you? I think not. Tyson's defense takes aim. I think that Desiree was not consistent. And later, what the jury did not hear. It was about the unfairest trial I've ever experienced. How you feeling, big dog? Still ahead on the pole. The moment... Rape has been made against Mr. Mike Tyson. Even though it was 12 years ago, Mike Tyson says he can't get this picture out of his mind. Do you replay in your mind the trial at all? Do you replay her testimony? Oh, I, I, I yes. This is just a lying, reptilian, monstrous young lady. I just hate her guts. And I, she put me in that state where I don't know. I really wish I did now, but now I really do want to rape her and her mama. I know you don't like to hear that, but no, I don't I'm like in that, that. state. I, I admit I like to hear Mike Tyson appears to be the kind of client who lawyers have not found easy to control. As the case headed for trial, attorney Vincent Fuller had a lot to deal with. Tyson's promoter, Don King, hired Fuller. Judged by your peers in, in, the, in, in the due process of justice. But why him? Fuller was a high-priced attorney from a white shoe Washington law firm, not a street crime specialist. Vince Fuller, your lawyer. How, how, what kind he of chance? He was a sellout piece of to sell. I didn't know anything about legal. So I'm with Don King, right? This guy, Don King, I'm glad you got into that. Thing. Don King's a decent man, supposedly. He's a piece of Because this guy got him out of a tax um, lawsuit. He's going to get this guy um, to handle my particular rape um, involvement. And, man, please. Full disclosure. Back in 1992, I was asked about this kind of attack on Vince Fuller by Mike Tyson. And in that interview, in essence, I said it's not uncommon for a defendant who's lost a trial to turn on his trial counsel. Did he talk to you at all? I mean, did he sit and did he come visit you and talk to you about the case at all? Listen, can I tell you something? He cared more about me going to jail than he cared about the bugs he stepped on his way to his job. We asked Vincent Fuller to talk about this case. He told us he didn't wish to appear on camera. Instead, we tracked down another member of the defense team, 
Jim Boyles, a top lawyer in Indianapolis. How do you describe the rapport that Vince Fuller had with Mike Tyson? Oh, I think, I think it was kind of like father-son relationship. I think Vince really liked Mike, and I think Vince um, tried to put himself in a position of uh, representing Mike in a way that he believed was appropriate at the time. Many of Tyson's supporters, like Reverend Charles Williams, disagree. I think Vince did not do that great of a job. But I felt like in this city, we don't sit well with bringing in outsiders. If there were an insider, it had to be Tyson's prosecutor, Greg Garrison, now host of a talk show in Indianapolis. I wish he were more of what they would call in the House of Representatives a blue dog. Uh, he's not enough of one. He he's a homegrown street lawyer. Brash, quick on his feet, personable. In many people's eyes, the opposite of Vincent Fuller. Should a lawyer who doesn't have experience in a, this is essentially street crime? Clearly not. He's from that federal place in Washington where you stand behind the podium and you're honored this and you're honored that, and there's not much sitting on the corner of the council table. And I just think uh, he was a fine lawyer that was not in the best form for himself. The state of Indiana versus Mike Tyson boiled down to a situation of he said, she said. And in Desiree, Washington, Garrison had a sympathetic victim to put on the stand. This was a great kid, this victim. She was beautiful inside and out. She was 5'5 five, five and 114 pounds. She had a big heart, and she was smart, but she was naive. There was an audible gasp from the gallery, and I think a little bit from the jury, when she walked in the courtroom, because she was tiny. Desiree told the jury that inside the limousine, Tyson, quote, grabbed me near him and he went to kiss me and I just kind of jumped back. She said that once inside Tyson's hotel room, the boxer's demeanor changed. She told the jury that Tyson said, quote, you're turning me on. Desiree told him, listen, I don't know what you think I came up here for. I'm not like that. Then Desiree claimed she stood up and walked to the bathroom. In there, she did something even prosecutors could not explain. The evidence that I would have f feared if I'd been the prosecution is that she went into the bathroom, removed her shield that she had in her underwear because she was starting her period, did not replace it. Mm -hmm. Didn't have anything with her. Why would I she know. have taken it away? I mean, exactly. the first thing, why did, she, why did she even remove it then? Something better than nothing. Remember, when she goes in that bathroom, from her testimony, he's already trying to kiss her. He's working on her. Oh, baby, mommy. Oh, mommy, you're turning me on. And she's all at once had this blinding flash of the obvious, oh God, I'm in the wrong place. And she did what women have done since there were restrooms. Off to the john. To some critics, Tyson's defense team didn't make enough of this incident. You know, here's a young lady who changed the panty liner, but in those suites, there are phones in there, which she could have very easily locked the door, called downstairs, and had security come up. There was, a, it just, there was a lot of things that didn't make sense. In his cross-examination, Vincent Fuller never asked Desiree directly that if, by removing her shield, she was getting ready to have sex. By the time Fuller mentioned the idea to the jury in his closing arguments, his own team began to wonder if he had lost the jury's attention. I, I think that uh, one of your first questions was, uh, did they connect with the defense? Was there a connection so that they're listening to us? Are they really absorbing the information we're giving them? Obviously, they didn't. Desiree told the jury that when she opened the bathroom door, Mike Tyson was sitting on the bed in his underwear. He grabbed her arm, and she said, ripped off her clothes. The next thing I knew, she said, he put me down on the bed and, quote, kept kissing me and kept saying, don't fight me, don't fight me. Desiree testified that during the course of the rape, it just felt like someone was ripping me apart. Well, I had sex, I didn't care about it. Tyson's recollection is different. It has sex with her, and it says over. I mean, I didn't take her serious, but I'm not a rapist. Mike, how long overall, if you can estimate, um, were you and uh, Desiree in your room? Listen, I don't know. It wasn't that long. What's not that long to you? <sighs> 15 minutes, probably 20 minutes, I can remember. No, I really think about it. It wasn't that long at all, because... I don't know. We didn't have sex. There was no real marathon love, love, lust situation. And when, when sh 
she went to leave, did you leave with her? No, I just uh, went to bed. Was there any suggestion of her spending the night? Yes. The defense argued that Desiree was no innocent victim. They painted her as a gold digger who must have known that Mike Tyson wanted only one thing from her, sex. Well, I think that Desiree was not consistent with what occurred that night. I think that there may have very well have been intercourse, and I think there may have well have been a consensual intercourse that maybe in her mind was, became inconsistent after that and became an act of rape. Why would she do that? I don't know. The prosecution wasn't buying that argument. His testimony was that he invited her to stay the night. Matter of fact, she said after he had done this to me, he had the gall to ask me to stay all night. Well, if you're a gold digger, if you're looking to get in the big boy's pants and to have all the glitz and glamour of being Mike Tyson's woman, which is better for you, to get walked in the car or invited to stay the night? I said to the jury, that's a touchdown. If she was a gold digger and she gets invited to spend the night, cha-ching. The trial ran for two weeks, and the prosecution presented several key witnesses to help them build a sequence of events. This was a case that was that fit together logically. We had medical and forensic evidence that was compelling. I mean, this kid was sore. She was hurt by this. We had a gynecologist that came and testified as to the injuries that were sustained by her. We had the guy that examined her in the ER. People that have consensual sex just don't have these kinds of injuries. Witness after witness described Tyson as a sexual predator. Some observers say that Vincent Fuller did little to discourage that image. I don't know if he was trying to use reverse psychology to say that that Mike was portrayed in that, that manner and that so it's easy for, for a woman to say that he raped her when he didn't because he had that reputation. I don't really know what he was trying to do, but I know it didn't work. Looking back on the trial, Tyson agrees. My representation thinks I'm a monster. So if he thinks I'm a monster, what are these poor, ignorant bastards who I consider our jurors, my equals, who never stole a loaf of bread, my equals, whose mother never, ever had to sell some to feed her children, my equals, of course, they're going to um, convict me. That's exactly what the jury did. After nine hours of deliberations, Mike Tyson was guilty of rape. Please tell your supporters, Mike. Tyson was eventually sentenced to 10 years in prison. Six years were suspended. But was justice served? When we come back, some jurors now have reasonable doubt. Looking back, do you think Mike Tyson had a fair trial? Looking back, no, I think his representation was very poor. And one of Desiree's old boyfriends adds a new twist to the story. He, uh, she went to the bathroom, and when she came out of the bathroom, she was coming out crying, very scared. And she kept on saying to me that sex before marriage was against her religion and her father was going to kill her. We'll tell you why the jury never heard his testimony. Coming up on the pulse, now that he's been thought that fit a man, so unpredictable and violent, but did the jury hear everything they needed to know? Was there any way he could be innocent? New information has surfaced. Greta Van Susteren continues her Pulse exclusive. Mike Tyson spent three years in prison for the rape of Desiree Washington. By his own admission, he wasn't exactly a model prisoner. I had a few altercations, all right? Why? Because I was, you know, I lost hope. It's a different game. You don't care about living anymore. Mike had to walk around with that attitude, just like he did in the ring, that don't bother me, because I'm going to kill you, type attitude, to survive. And when he was released in night his name, why does this case sit, uh, stick with you so much? I mean, in the sense that it's been more than 10 years, you've served your time. Why does this have such an impact on you? I don't know, man. You know, any case, you can get your dignity back before rape. No, no dignity, buddy. Taking some <laughs> all these hoes out here, you taking <laughs> That's not cool. That's not cool. To this day, Tyson maintains he got a raw deal in his first trial. But did he? It wasn't even a semblance of fair trial. 
Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz represented the boxer in an appeal. The exclusion of witnesses uh, was not fair. The exclusion of relevant evidence that would have shown the jury uh, the whole picture was not fair. It was about the unfairest trial I've ever experienced. But what do the former jurors themselves say? The Pulse tracked down David Volley, Michael Weddick, and Beth Williver. Looking back, you think Mike Tyson had a fair trial? Looking back, no, I think his representation was very poor. Beth? I would agree with that. As far as what I know now, I, I don't think that he got the representation that he deserved. Everyone deserves that. What about the decision to put Mike Tyson on the, on the witness stand? Was that a good decision? I can tell you what was a god-awful decision, to put him on the witness stand after having him allowed to testify in front of the grand jury. Though the defense team still feels it did the right thing, the prosecution says allowing him to testify played right into their hands. We wanted him to see bad Mike, because he's got this little squeaky voice and he likes to talk like he's just a nice kid, but there's an ugly side to him that comes out like that, and it did. Why do you think the jury believed her and didn't believe you? I think um, I was arrogant on the stage. The way he looked the girls up and down. Oh, yeah, but, but other than that... Just gave me the creep. Then, there's the three eyewitnesses the jurors never got to see. It was three ladies who had come to me and said they had witnessed certain things, and I passed them on uh, to, the, to the attorneys. Three witnesses who saw uh, Desiree Washington willingly kissing and hugging Mike Tyson, one of them said I think she, she was all over him, uh, were precluded from testifying on the most technical of technicalities. Judge Gifford ruled the defense presented them too late to be included. The Pulse located two of them neither agreed to talk on camera. And there was another potential witness the jurors never heard from either. Wayne Walker, who is he? A young man who heroically came forward to tell the truth. Uh, once her picture and name appeared, he said, oh my God, that's Desiree Washington. She wasn't a virgin the way she was portrayed at the trial. According to his sworn statement, Walker, a high school boyfriend, said when Desiree's father found out they'd had consensual sex, he accused him of raping her. Why, and I use an obscenity, could you accuse me of rape? That's such a big word that can really ruin a person. And uh, she replied as, I had to say something to cover myself because you know what my father would do. With. He provided an affidavit to that effect. Uh, Judge Gifford, forget about it. Should the jury have heard that? Of course the jury should have heard it. What if? she had previously accused someone else of rape. Would that have made a difference to you? Uh, I would have to be true to proof of that. In the event that it had been presented in court, and when you were evaluating her testimony, would it have given you reason to sort of stop and think, well... Possibly if I hadn't heard the other evidence and testimony, it might have. Beth? I think that that might have made a difference with me. I mean, I think it would have shown um, her character as being a little different. All the defense has to do is raise a reasonable doubt, and in this case, the reasonable doubt would have been about the credibility of Desiree Washington. The jurors didn't have it then, but some do today. Dave, uh, you, I know that you came in here with uh, some, you know, some reservation. Not that you necessarily think he's innocent, but uh, some reasonable doubt. Um, still got it? Uh, yeah, I'm not 100%. The only thing that here bothers me is the fact that the information that we were not given. Would that make a definite make a reasonable doubt? So you have reasonable doubt? We have reasonable doubt. You could have gotten out a year earlier from prison if you said you did it, right? Yeah. And? I didn't want to come home the day I was released. Okay, so I don't know. What was I coming home to? What would I get released to? Just think, man. This is always going to be 
hovering over my head, something I did not do. If I did anything I did, right, I hit that guy in Maryland wrong. I hit those people. But um, I didn't rape this woman. So what would you like to happen? I mean, how could uh, you become happy, and how does this get I like, fixed? I would love for this, um, you could have a mock trial, we could have a new trial, we could um, relocate the witnesses, have another trial, and um, if I lose, I'll do my time again. Mike Tyson is unlikely to get his wish. And according to the man who prosecuted him in his rape trial, if he doesn't get a handle on his temper, I didn't rape that moron, and plus I gave him all my money. His future looks very dark. If we're talking about him 10 years from now or 20 years from now, what's going to happen with him? Oh, he'll die. I mean, somebody will get him. He'll, he'll get silly to the wrong adversary. Really, you think that? Sure. You're asking for it. Begging for it. Confessed. He lives for the violence. It's, it's his stock and trade. And, you know, you can, only, you can only get by with so many fights in traffic before you pick on somebody that didn't bring a knife to a gunfight. And then it's all over for you. I promise you that.